Fingers crossed. I was just about to say, are you it's, recording? I am recording now. All righty. It's been a lecture question. Good, 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 good. All right. Awesome. Welcome, everyone, to another uh, another episode of Coding with Kyle here with everyone. I have a slight headache today, but I at least have coffee. So I think that equals out to a normal Kyle. So we're going to hopefully get through this together. All right. Today, it is a relationships and object relational mapping. So we are going to be talking about getting a little bit more into ORM and how we can be using it for everything we're going to be working with today. Uh, as always, we're going to start out with announcements. For announcements, big fun one, graduation approaches. It is coming up, everyone. Yes, get excited. I'm very, very, very stoked. It's on my calendar. It's pinned. It's got a little icon with a little graduation symbol on it. I am very excited for that. So keep working. We have one more assignment there, which is assignment number four. So there's technically no studio night, but I made this announcement yes, uh, last week, but I know there's a little bit of confusion there. There is still small groups after this. You'll be meeting with your small group every time after lecture. Nothing is changing there. Last week was just the last studio that we have on the website before a studio 19 that is graded. However, we still have catch-ups. We still have content that we need to be reviewing. So you will still be going to your small groups. Right, so I am apologize for any of that confusion there. So make sure you're working on your assignment number four. Make sure you get that on your computer, at least reading through it. Again, if you need to catch up on a three, two, or one, this is that time to, if you have any questions about any of it, reach out to me, reach out to your TAs, TFs, and your fellow colleagues. All right. Those are my only two announcements for tonight. Any questions? Any questions on your all's end before we dive into it today? The assignments definitely do on the 18th, right? The assignments were due, and I believe that was posted last week on what exactly that day was. Do, 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 do. Was it the 18th? No, I wasn't through it. It's due on the 18th. It there it is. Yep, 11 18. Okay. 11 18 for those assignments. Cool, um, yep, I haven't been able to confirm anything with Greg yet. I have a meeting with him this week, so I apologize. I haven't been able to give you that exact date, but yeah, looks like the 18th tentatively okay, every question cool. thank you absolutely any other questions mine's a week later right because i get the extended time i don't exactly know you'll have to reach out to greg and or taylor for any of that information i don't have any of that for you okay awesome all right any other questions okay ducky one last sip of coffee and let's get this party started as always, too, you're going to be talking to me because I need to get these vocal cords warmed up. So help me out by how do we start building a table in SQL? Talk me through it. Turn on your What's computer. <laughs> Step one, turn create. on the computer. I'll give it to you. <laughs> Very good. The keyword create. Awesome. And then what comes next? Instead of doing this for getting your vocal cords warmed up, just do an Apesio or something. <laughs> I'm joking. All right, yes. After create, what is the next keyword? Table. Table, very good. And then what comes after table? Table name. Okay. Very oh. good. The table name. In this case, we're going to be creating the owner table today. So owner table is going to be coming next. That's what we're going to be doing. After that, we're going to be including some information in there. I'm going to be giving that to you now here. The owner ID, that name, city, and age. Just maybe are just simple stuff about what a dog owner would have right there. But my question to you all is that how do we state that something is a unique identifier in the table? What primary do we key. include? Primary key, very good. That primary key is what indicates which row or which column is going to be the unique identifier to exactly call out which row we want. So primary key, very good. And as always, after primary key, how do we automatically generate those keys for us so we don't have to worry about it? Auto increment. Auto, Auto increment, fantastic. That auto increment right there will continuously build our IDs for us in our tables. As we saw with ORM last week, that really does help out a lot because we don't have to worry about creating the IDs for our events, our event jobs, or excuse me, our jobs or our dogs or anything like that. It automatically builds it for us over in the SQL side. So once we press run query or however you want to call it, it builds this table here that we have for owner table. 
Now what I'm gonna do too is I need to create a dog table. So I'm gonna create this dog table here with our dog ID being the primary key. We're gonna auto increment it with a dog name of a var char 50, their dog age and our owner ID int. But my question to you is how do we actually create or have start that contact with another table? How do we create that link with another table, that glue that we were talking about? Foreign key. What? Very good, yes, a foreign key is what we need there. This is going to start or establish the connection between tables. If we want to make the foreign key the owner ID, talk me through how we're going to do that, utilizing the dog table. What comes next after foreign key? Um, in parentheses, you'll state what from our table will be, so owner ID. Absolutely right. We're going to tell which one of our columns is going to be signaling to that foreign key. It's going to be actually going to be the foreign key that we're attaching to another table. Now, what do we do after that? How are we actually going to attach it to the other table? What keyword are we going to use next? References. References. Very good. Now we're saying, okay, I want to talk to this next table. So we use the keyword references. Fantastic. And no one comes after that. Owner table. Owner table. Very good. And keep it, give me a little bit more. And owner parentheses. table. Parentheses, owner, owner ID. There you go. I didn't have another transition there. So I need a little bit more information. So yes, we have owner table inside those parentheses is what column in that particular table indicates their primary key that we're going to attach our foreign key with. When we run this, we create our dog table here. And as we see with our filled in key there, that's denoting our primary keys, while our owner ID in the dog table is attached to our owner ID in the owner table via that foreign key. This again is how we provide the structure, the architecture we need to have a good table system in our SQL databases. This provides not only that structure, but also validation when we're including information in the tables. So remember that those foreign keys and primary keys are very, very important when we're trying to just build a basic table system in our databases. So awesome job. Let's keep moving forward. How do we add data to a table? What key are we going to be using for that one? Insert. Insert. Very good. Insert. Absolutely right. Keep giving it to me. What else after insert? Um, into. Very good. Into and then? Table name. Table name. Uh, yes, table name. We're also going to be note denoting in this one the specific columns, columns. that we want to mm -hmm. have in there too. We're doing this because we no longer have to fill out our ID for us. We have a more custom insert here. Hence, we have to include the column name. So very good there. Then after we say what columns we want to do, what keyword comes next? Values. Values. Very good. This values keyword says, okay, this is where I want you to insert it at. Let's actually give you the information that I want you to put into the table. In that case, we do the parentheses and then we say star, which is our dog name, seven, which is the dog's age, and then Kyle, who is the dog owner. So with this, we are actually going to insert that information into that owner table. Now we've seen this for the past few classes. I really do want to get this into everyone's head, mainly because as Hibernate gets more and more intricate inside of our applications, we lose a lot of sight of this actually happening on the SQL side. But we need to make sure that we remember how it's actually working in case we ever have to debug it. That's the best way to debug something is know how it's actually working at the most basic of levels. That's what we're going through right now. So fantastic. What I'm gonna do is insert another owner in there. I'm gonna have Sarah in there as well. And then we have our dog information below, Waggy and Odie. Now my question to you all is, if I would change Kyle's age from 27 to 28, because I think I was around my birthday time at this point. So how would I celebrate a birthday in SQL? How am I going to change my age in SQL? Would you alter table? Update. Alter, update. We're gonna be using the word update. Alter is if you wanna change the structure of the table, if I wanted to add a column. Update is how we would change an entry or a row. So very good, update, and then what comes next? Table name, um, owner good, table. The table name, very good, absolutely, owner table, awesome. And then what's the next keyword after that? Set. Set, set. we gotta set that information. What are we gonna be setting again? Who's owner having a birthday? Age. Exactly, owner I wish I was 28 again. 28 is like that age that I don't wanna turn any more ages, like I wanna stay at 28. 
but unfortunately, I know February is coming here soon. All right. Anyway, we're going to set the owner age, but we need to not set every single owner to 28. If I ran this right now, Sarah, who's 33, is turning back to 28. Though she will be very delighted to hear that, we can't do that. So we need to denote exactly who we want to update this entry for. Mm -hmm. So what keyword do I use next? Where. Where. Yeah. Very good. Where. That's how we start our conditionals there. And what are we going to be using here? Owner name. Owner, 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 owner ID equals one. Very good. We're going to be doing owner ID. I heard owner name out there. Remember, there can be multiple Kyles, though I'm a little bit offended about that. There can be multiple Kyles out there. So we don't want to use something that can be more general. We need to use very specific things. So ID is what we have to use. Now, if we wanted to set every Kyle to 28, yes, we could do that. But again, we want to usually keep things more specific. Awesome job, everyone. All right, so next up, we're going to be talking about some more things with our dogs. But before that, actually, I wanted to call out, sorry, any other questions about this or what we just went through with all these SQL calls? Anything at all? I, heard, I saw someone type in there, so I was just gonna give it a moment. Any questions about anything SQL? that we just saw. All right. Cool, cool, cool. So now that we have that information actually inside of our tables, let's talk about actually getting it out of the database. Remember, we provide data to stay in that persistence layer, but we can also get it back. That's what makes databases so awesome. So we're gonna bring in that dog table right there. And my question to you all is, how would I get all of the dogs that have an owner out of the table? So really, really, take a look at this, notice that Odie, poor Odie, does not have an owner. So how would I do this? You can talk me through this one. What keyword would I start with? Select. You select. Very good, select. That's how we query something. We're gonna select information from there. And in this case, I wanna get back all the dog information. So what symbol do I use? Asterisk. 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 Very good, the asterisk will denote that we want everything back. Fantastic. Dog. And then, what's after that? From? From. 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 Dog Very table. good. Absolutely right. From dog table. Awesome. And now what's going to come next? Where? Very good. We need to start a conditional. We need to tell SQL that we want only specific entries back. So anybody know how to do this conditional? Anyone want to take a stab at it? You say where owner ID is not null. Mm -hmm. Very good. Absolutely. <laughs> we're basically just talking to SQL in normal language there. We're going to say where owner ID is, the keyword is not and null. All three are keywords inside of the SQL language. So what this does is that it says, okay, I'm going to return you every owner I find, or excuse me, every dog that I find in this table, that owner ID is not null. And that query result is such. We're going to get back our dog ID name of Stark 7 and 1. So we're only going to get Stark entry back there. So this is a really big one that I want to call out that we didn't really talk about too much in the past lectures with SQL. But if you don't want to select something or you want to find that something that is not null, you say is not null, spaces between each. Awesome. Any questions on that? All right, let's keep on keeping on then. So for this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be selecting from the dog table and we're going to be doing an inner join on the owner table where the owner ID and the owner ID match. When it comes to this, for the owner ID, we see that our owner ID for the foreign key and the primary key will match here and these two will be pulled back. So we're going to really quickly review just an inner table join. When we do two inner joins on the tables, what information comes back exactly? Anybody remember what it specifically the inner join does? Things that they relate to each other, right? Yeah, for, for the most part, I believe so, yeah. It's basically going to see what information is true with the conditional and return only that information. What I mean by that is that we're only gonna get back things that match in that query result. So we're only going to get back Stark and Kyle in that query, or Stark and Kyle, the owners, the two owners that match with the dog back in those query results. Everything else in the past ones, such as Odie and Sarah, will be ignored. If we did a left join, 
on this one, it would take back which table. If we did a left join here, would it take back information, all information from dog table or owner table? Dog table. Dog table. Very owner good, table. because our left table is the from table. Well, if we did a right join, it would be the owner table. That's our right table. That's one big thing to like really, really note about left and right joins. Left is the from table, and the inner or the join one is the right table. Whatever one you choose, left or right, all that information comes back, and then the matching stuff would be on the right hand side, depending on which join you do. But yes, that query right there gives us this result. So any questions on that? Any questions on those joins? Anything like that? All right. And we're gonna take a pause here, take a breath. We just went over a bunch of SQL. I, I do have a question. Yeah, what's going on? So if you were doing like a join, like is it is it fair to say like whichever one comes first is like left or right, or is it like always like a kind of syntax that you have to use to yeah, like you see how you got on the side, dog table, owner table. Like if you put that in a um uh like a query mm -hmm. and you put like dog table first, you know, you wanna join with the owner, like not you know, yeah, it's kind of join with the owner table. Mm -hmm. Is it do you have to use certain syntax or is it like a sequential thing like when we learn with JavaScript? So in this regard dog table or so the from table whatever's on the from line is always the left table well the one next to the join is the right table if you want to do a left join you'd say instead of inner join you'd say left join using the keyword left meaning that all the data from dog table in this example would be pulled back while the matching stuff would be on the right hand side if you only want stuff from the right hand table you'd say right join where all the information from the owner table will be pulled back, while the matching information will be pulled back only are on the left-hand side. Okay. So, so to answer your question, the syntax would be making sure that one, we use the correct keyword, left or right, but we also wanna make sure that we note that always the left table is from the, the from section and the right, high, the right side table is from the join section. So it really matters about where you place your tables of where that information is going to be coming in from. So it's more about placement than syntax, if okay. that makes sense. Yeah, <clears throat> that clears it up. Okay, sounds good. All right, so with this, like we said, our query is going to look like this. We have an inner join, so we only pack back, pull back that matching information. So what I want to do today is that I want to talk about essentially how things can be related in databases. So right now, what we have constructed is an owner table and a dog table and how those things are truly, um, how our owners are then related to our dogs and our dogs are owner, uh, related to our owners. So as of right now, we have our dogs and then we have our owners. Simple as that, right? It's a typical structure. As of right now, an owner, as we know in real life, an owner can have two dogs. I can have three dogs. If I want and I get to that point in my life, I might have 50 dogs. I don't exactly know yet, but I can have multiple dogs. On the opposite side though, or excuse me, owners can have multiple dogs. On the opposite side though, this is a rare case. In this case, and I know this is a situation, but in this situation, this class, a dog cannot have two owners. One person owns that dog. One person actually purchased it. One person is actually owning that dog. So in this case, a dog cannot have two owners, but an owner can have two dogs. So if it comes to this, in our system, in our architecture, our database, that we want to actually have these dogs related to one owner, we have to make a type of relationship for this. So what I'm going to go through is essentially how to correctly this is always the toughest class too, because it's gonna be, it's, it boggles my mind on this one. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is that many dogs can have one owner. This relationship that we have is called a many to one relationship. Many dogs can have one owner. So remember how I'm saying that exactly. If you're phrasing it in a sentence, 
Many dogs can have one owner. So I'll pause it there and switch these perspectives. From the owner's point of view, one owner can have multiple dogs. So one owner to many dogs. In the owner's point of view, it is a one to many relationship. So these are two different perspectives. Again, from the dog's perspective, it can have many, I got to go back to, there you go. From the dog's perspective, it can have many owners. Or sorry, you're gonna, sorry, from the dog's perspective, it can only have one owner. So many dogs can have one owner. Well, one owner can have many dogs. So from the owner's perspective, it's a one-to-many relationship. So depending on what perspective you are on when you're talking about the relationship is how it's exactly named. So from this, what we have here is essentially one way to actually talk about that relationship. And let me make sure that I am on point for that. So that is our second relationship that we wanna talk about is the one-to-many. The final one that I wanna bring up just right now is that we have a bunch of dogs. However, with a bone, dogs are fairly protective. If we have two dogs going to one bone, we typically are going to have a bit of a dog fight. You don't exactly want one bone to two dogs. Those dogs typically don't want to share. In this case, each dog has their own bone. In this kind of relationship, it's a many-to-many -many relationship. Or sorry, excuse me, it's a one-to-one -one relationship. Wow, I am. Should have taken some time on all before this. One dog to one bone. So when it comes to a dog's bone, it's going to be very protective of its own item. Hence, we're going to have a one-to-one -one relationship with that. So right now, let's take a step back. We've gone over three different relationship types. Many to one, many dogs to one owner. We flip that perspective. Now we have one owner to many dogs. Because again, it's all about that point of view. And now we have this one where our dog only wants to have their bone. So it's a one to one relationship. These are the three relationships that we're gonna be talking about right now. There's one more that I accidentally mentioned, but we'll talk about that in a bit. But these are the first three that I wanted to introduce you all to. So with this, let's go ahead and start actually working on building these relationships. Before we do that, any questions about that? It'll become a little bit more apparent as we see more of an example in code. I just want to make sure that anybody needs any additional clarification. I'm going to unmute anybody that wants to talk for just a moment. All right. Let's go ahead then and actually look at some code and see if we can make a little bit more sense about this. So we're gonna start building our relationships. We already talked about that we want to, or we have our dogs and we have our owners. So talk me through here real quick. How do we create a dog class? How do we start it? How have we always started it? Public. Public. And then what comes next when we're creating a class? Class. Uh, very good. Public class dog, probably, I promise I wasn't trying to trip anybody up there. All right, after that, how do we make this class into something that Hibernate can use? So this dog is going to be something special to us. Entity. Very good, entity. This at entity annotation is going to tell Hibernate, I want you to make this dog into a table. I want it to persist. So at entity is that magical annotation that allows Hibernate to know what you want to create into a table. After that, we're going to go ahead and just add some properties in there, an ID, a name, and an age field. My question to you is, what kind of constructor does an entity always need? Always need. Empty. Very good. An empty constructor. So we say public dog with an empty constructor in there. Awesome. And then we can create whatever other constructors that we want. So in this case, I'm just going to have just this arbitrary name and age one. That's all fine. Um, and then whatever our getters and setters need to be for that. But my question to you all is now, how do we tell which one of these fields we want to be the primary key when Hibernate takes a hold of this? What is the annotation that we need, as well as for auto increment? Uh, at ID, primary key. 
Very good. At ID and at generated value. Fantastic. <clears throat> awesome. So right here, we just created a dog entity. In this, we're going to go over to IntelliJ and just make sure everything is set up properly. So we go into our dog class, which I have under models here. And like we said, we have our int age, our owner name. Uh, we have our, okay, yeah, we haven't done that one yet, but we'll do that. And so we get there. And then also we extended pet, which we didn't do in the example. But if anybody remembers, this, this is our map super class from last class. Our pet is our abstract, uh, our abstract class that we had beforehand that has our ID generated value inside of it and the name of our pet. Over here, we do need to make one small change. It says that it no longer wants a string owner name, it wants an owner, which luckily, I already have that owner class created for us. So great there. It is not a pet, so I did not extend the pet there, so it doesn't extend that map super class. So under dog, I'm gonna change string to owner. I'm gonna say owner here. What I'm gonna do is come down here, edit this stuff. We no longer wanna do these getters and setters. I'm gonna right click. Press generate, a getter and setter please for our owner. There we go. So what I just did is I updated our owner name now to an actual owner object. So what we're doing here is attaching objects to objects. You've seen this before in Java. Now we're just holding reference to whoever our owner is in this owner property here, where our owner, uh, excuse me, the instance of the owner class is gonna have all this information in there, their ID, their name, where they're from, et cetera. So there we go. We have now updated our dog method. Let's keep moving forward and see what else we need to do. Now I'm gonna organize my windows here. All right, so we have all of our dog stuff there. Let's keep going forward. Why did you just do that? There we go. Yep, 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 yep. There we go. All right. As we saw, we already changed our owner to owner. Fantastic. And now what we want to do is actually insert that relationship in there. From the dog's perspective, it needs to have one, or from the dog's perspective, it is one owner to, or one dog to, or, oh my gosh. This is where it always, this is where it always comes in. Like, all right, gotta wrap my head around actually how to phrase this. The relationship is that the dog can have many owners. So the owner, there's one owner to many dogs. So let me go ahead and make sure that I have that relationship. So we're gonna have one to many there. What I'm gonna do real quick is make sure and stop that. I know there's a typo somewhere in this presentation. I'm going to go ahead and compile this real quick. I don't want to be blowing smoke, so I'm going to double check myself before I continue on. There it is. Ha! I knew that was the typo. Gotcha. Yep. Trying to trip myself up right there. Many to one, because that's how we talked about it in the presentation at, <laughs> in the first place anyway. So from the dog's perspective, we can have many dogs to one owner. So there we go, let me make sure and run that. So we have many dogs to one owner. So I apologize for that. I was trying to find that typo before class started and some other stuff, but let's go ahead and run this and make sure that we're all okay. I think we're gonna get a different error here, but it will tell us we're fine. There we go, started perfect. All right, so again, this is, it is a very tough portion and there's people out there that are way smarter than me probably, but like, okay, I already got it down, but just in case you have it, the sentence is that many dogs can have one owner. Hence, we have a many to one relationship. So the context of what class we're in, that's the point of view we are working with. So many dogs, because we're in the dog class, to one owner. So if we were talking about credit cards, something along those lines, if we are in the credit card class, you can have many credit cards to one owner or to one person. So it'd be for the credit cards perspective, it's a many to one, you can have many credit cards to one person. In this case, you can have many dogs to one owner. 
So there we go. We have established this relationship now, many to one in the owner field. I'm gonna make note to make sure I actually correct that. I also have no pencils right here. So mental note. All right. So real quick, any questions on that one? Let me go ahead and hop back here to there. I see a question in our chat. That is a fantastic question. Andrew, to, to answer your question, the, or excuse me, it is, what are we exactly trying to accomplish by defining this many to one relationship? If we remember what the foreign key and the primary key does, it is to establish, it is to establish a direct line of, excuse me, a direct line between two tables. So we have been able to establish a relationship between two tables. Now we're trying to essentially establish multiple parts of that table, multiple entries with another entry in another table. What I mean by that is that when Hibernate takes our Java code or our objects and needs to translate it over into SQL, it needs to know if I have met like 100 dogs to one owner, it needs to know exactly what dog IDs pertain to that owner itself. So what we're trying to do is tell Hibernate exactly how to divvy up those relationships by doing these many to one and one to many relationships. A follow up question was, so putting multiple, um, putting multiple entries under one line of code or one command. Uh, could you elaborate a little bit more on that question? I guess, um, so we're putting this, this is going to like, but owner ID in multiple tables or uh, or vice versa or whatever, depending on the type of relationship. Correct, yes. What it's gonna do is it's, this is gonna establish a table itself to tell which data relates to which, meaning what dogs relate to which owners or what owner relates to which dogs. And that will, this will help, or this will help Hibernate establish that connection inside of the SQL database. So that's what we're trying to do right now is tell Hibernate how to exactly model all this information relating to each other. So I know it's really hard to explain with words, so I will show exactly what it's doing here in a moment um, and what its use actually is. But that was my best attempt at truly explaining what's going on behind the scenes there. So I'll go ahead and Continue on here, unless, I'm sorry, I apologize, Andrew. Any, any other additional question there uh, before I try to show a little bit more in a physical sense of what's actually going on? No, that was great. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and do that then. So right now we've so far established one side of the relationship. Right now the dog is related to the owner with a many to one relationship. Let's hop back over to our presentation. And we are going to work a little bit more here. So we have our owner, we have a one to many, which is a lie. It is a many to one. Again, I apologize for that. Get my zoom and stuff back to go. Did you right now? Did you go big no way? Awesome. All right. So let's go ahead and switch perspectives now back over to the owner side. For this one, of course, our owner is also gonna be an entity, so we use that at entity annotation, and then we bring in those properties. So you've already seen this owner class very, very quickly, but we have our ID, our name, and our city, where our ID is our primary key, and it's auto-incremented, aka we're using that generated value there. As always, we have to create an empty constructor, because that's what Hibernate requires. And then finally, we can put any of our other constructors down there in our getters and setters. We have seen this before. But what we are going to be introducing inside of our owner now is part of that relationship. Again, an owner can have many dogs. If I have many things inside of a container, typically what kind of data structure am I gonna be using? In Java sense, we're gonna be usually using lists. That's that type of data, uh, that data structure that can grow and shrink depending on how much we actually have to store. In this case, we're gonna be having a list of dogs which of course we're just gonna call dogs. Again, I apologize for this typo. It should be a one to many because one owner can have many dogs. So now we're gonna go hop over to IntelliJ and actually implement that. So in here, I do really wanna call out, do not use array list. Use the 
keyword list in this. Say that Hibernate does not uh, approve of a array list being a structure that holds your contents. So we need to say list of dogs, dogs. And then who can tell me who kept it straight there from all of those typos? What relationship is our, uh, what annotation, what relationship to type are we going to place over our list of dogs? One too many. One too many. Very good. Because one owner <clears throat> can have many dogs. Fantastic. So we have one to many. Again, we take in whatever class perspective we're in. So we're in the owner's perspective. So it's one owner to many dogs. This dog is the data type that's inside of our list. Fantastic. There we go. Let's go and run this and let's see what happens. Hope we don't get any red there. Come on, there we go. Finish. It's going to build some stuff. And there we go. Awesome. So this is starting up, we know, because it says start on the bottom. We're going to hop over to our MySQL. And we are in our awesome pet store. This is one we've been working in through our lectures. I'm going to go ahead and up here and refresh. Always remember to refresh stuff when you're creating or adding tables. And now we have some tables in here that I want to go through. Now we have our cat table. You saw this from last lecture because we have a cat entity in there. It's nothing crazy. It's under cat. Because we have this entity tag up here, it creates the cat table. Our dog is also an entity. So we created a table for it. An owner was also created because it is also an entity. But we have one additional table. Also, don't worry about this hibernate sequence. Don't delete it, but just don't worry about it. <clears throat> if you do really want to know what it is, it's our incrementer. So it helps us increment um, our IDs as we move forward. But again, don't drop it. Don't worry about it. The one we should be worried about right now is this new table down here called owner underscore dogs. This is a table that was created due to those many or one to many and many to one relationships. I'm trying to get this a little bit bigger. Why aren't you going? There it is. In here, we see we have two columns, owner ID and dogs ID. These two columns will be a portion for Hibernate to actually keep track of what dog IDs pair with which, uh, which owner IDs. So those one to many and many to one annotations that we made helped us create this table that's gonna keep track of that information. What we're gonna do now is that we're going to actually add some dogs in there in order to, yeah, we're gonna add some dogs into this system so we can actually see what's going on. So let's go ahead and do that. What we're gonna do here is, we're gonna start that, we need to go actually down to, what we do is quickly add an owner one, because I don't actually have a template for that and I forgot about that. So we need to actually, we're gonna do it all from the start. We're gonna be creating an owner controller today. So what I'm gonna do is copy the dog controller, paste it, call it our owner controller. I'm gonna be utilizing some of that owner controller there. Instead of dog, we wanna say owner. We're gonna be creating an owner repository here soon. Repository. You wanna see how it is in day in life with Kyle? This is it. Let's borrow extra code from there. We need to create or create. Instead of dog, it should be owner. Dog, it should be owner. And then we redirect back to there. And our owner repository is where we're gonna be saving our dog information at our owner information at instead of this should be owner and we should be doing owner here and then owner here line 25 oh yep we'll be going through it i work my way from the outside in that's always how i do it so i start at the class level go to my or go to my class variables constructors then methods and then inside the methods all right that's going to be red and that's going to be red because we actually don't have it all right, there's cool, cool, cool. So it's gonna be just very, very mad at us because we don't have an owner repository. So let's go and do that now. What I did is I copied dog repository and now I'm gonna say owner repository in here. It's gonna create that. Git's just gonna constantly be annoying me there with that. So instead of dog, we need to do owner. Awesome. 
And I know I've been getting uh, recommendations to do more coding, like they want to see it intricate. This is it. Get ready. Because I did not build my templates like I was supposed to beforehand. So there we go. Our owner repository has been created. I'm going to import that class. And now save is red, or that red is gone there. So we have now created our owner controller and our owner repository. Remember that the repository is what talks to our MySQL database. So we definitely need that in there for our persistence layer. So we have our controller there. We have our persistence layer set up. Now it's time to actually do some visual work. So we have our create portions here. So that's going to be under templates. I'm going to right click new directory. And I'm going to say owner. So this is where we actually need to go ahead and create the owner. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this create and paste it over here. There we go, and I'm just gonna keep it create. Create an owner. It should be an owner. Awesome. And instead of dog, it should actually be owner. I'm going to copy owner, and I'm gonna go ahead and paste all of that in there. There we go. And instead of owner name, it should just be name. go owner age oh, what else do we put on our owner um owner has name oh it's city and our dogs but um where's create at oh, let's go back to it all right name we have city and then oh, wow i'm already forgetting it we have name and city, and that's it. And then our list of dogs, which we're not gonna work with right now. Awesome. All right, so we actually don't need that. So our owner name and our owner age. Fantastic, and then we can press create. So we're just gonna go ahead and establish that real fast there. Owner name, owner name, owner age, owner city too. Awesome. All right, so we've successfully done a create on that one. Let's go ahead and stop this rerun see if we get any errors and i believe now we can actually create an owner inside of our database age or city you put owner age uh, I'm gonna see where the, oh it's right there all right thank you yeah it's going to edit that there we go all started let's hop over here we can actually use now this oh, say 80 all right slash create slash owner oh i had that backwards should be a slash owner slash slash create all right there we go owner name is going to be kyle today and owner it should be owner city we're going to say saint louis let's see what happens with this one awesome let's go and hop over here i'm going to right click refresh all come over to owner query it and we see that now we have our owner information in there. Now, what are exactly are we doing here? We need to include owner information inside of our database so we have an owner to attach to a dog. So that's what we're doing here. Now we need to actually allow our users to attach an owner name to our dog. So that's what we're gonna do next. Where they can actually attach an owner to the dog is most likely gonna be in that create here. We want them to be able to, instead of doing an owner name here, we want them to be actually able to attach a real owner out there. So this is where the magic is going to happen. So what we're gonna do here actually is I'm going to borrow some information here. Select in HTML. There we go. I'm borrowing this select here. Thank you very much. We're gonna be pasting it in there. I apologize for not having this ready. I thought this would at least be in the code, but it's not. So I'm going to say attach owner. And if IntelliJ wants to catch up. Up until this point, any questions? Well, I do wait for IntelliJ to stop being itself. Nothing. All right. IntelliJ is back, so let's keep doing this. Owner. There we go. And it's going to be owner. ID is going to be owner. And here is where we're actually going to do the loop. And what is this going to be? TH each. Let's 
and that's going to be owner and owners. There we go. And, uh, oh, I'm going to need. <laughs> I'm going to need that here in a second. Or that ID, I believe. Let's go with that for a second. Th. I might, yeah, I do have more time. There we go. Alrighty. I think I'm going to be getting an error for that. So let me go ahead and get this. Going. Um, one last thing we have here is that. I'm going to actually, okay, owner, I'm going to take that out because we don't no longer need that. But over here in owner controller, we forgot one thing, and that is going to be when we're actually adding the attribute here, or sorry, not under owner controller, we need the dog controller where all this information is going to be coming in. There we go. So this is where we need to pass in all that information. So we're going to say model.add attribute, and we need to now say owners because remember, I called that out in the template. So because I need the owner information, I need to have one more thing here as well. I need to actually have the owner repository. So I'm gonna copy that from the owner controller, come over here, paste that in there. Owner repository dot find all, because that's how we get all of our information back from there. So we have owners there, dog create, and believe one more thing. No, we have everything good. Okay, good. Believe it just in case too. We're gonna to pass it down here if we have to have an error. I guess we're gonna pass that in there. Oh, it's auto bait because it was weak in the back. So I'm fine. Okay, there we go. Owner's there. Stop that. There we go. Come back over to localhost. I think it's all up and running. It's not. Mm -hmm. It is definitely a case of the Mondays today. That's for sure. Initial spring adding started. Awesome. Let's go and hop back over here to localhost 8080. Press enter. Go slash uh, dog slash creates. We go yes, I remember. It. Now I gotta actually figure out what I'm gonna do with that one. <laughs> but anybody worked ahead. Did anybody remember what exactly the field is for the input? No, I don't need that. I need the create for. The select. There we go. Dog slash select or dog slash create there. So let me actually populate this. I almost forget. Time leaf select. There we go. Yep, yep, yep. I am aware. Oh, it's th text. Okay, my bad. There we go. Still need to do th text, and then it's going to be dollar sign owner dot name. There we go. Make sure that's everything there. Awesome. Stop that. All right. So again, what we're trying to do here is actually. Yeah, Darren, absolutely. We'll do a walkthrough of anything specifically that you all want to see. Right now, uh, we haven't done anything that is new that we haven't done in the past lectures. Right now, what I'm doing is creating a create screen for the owners, and I'm updating now the create screen for the dog. But anything else in particular, if anybody wants to do a quick uh, question on what I was doing at a moment that anyone got lost, feel free to let me know. I'm happy to do that. I just want to get this working so we can actually see that example. There we go. So now what we see is we see our dog name, our dog age, and now our owner, Kyle. So cool. 
we're now able to get that information back. So one more thing that we need to do is that I'm gonna double check that the dog controller is working properly. Looks like we're getting back our valid dog there. Our dog, and then in our dog creates, go, our actual ID and name is owner. Fantastic. Let's see what happens when we actually try to create a dog named Stark. Our dog's age is going to be a nice seven. And then a Kyle. All right, creates. Let's see where our errors lie now. Okay, well, that's not a bad sign. So let's go and hop over to dog real quick, refresh our dog screen. And we see that Stark is in there with an owner ID. Awesome, let's go and see here real quick. We attach our dogs properly. One. One many, awesome, okay. All right, so we're gonna be having back now in our dog controller. Should be getting back that owner ID. Let's make sure we're getting that back. Owner repository. I want to make sure this is correct before I actually go through it. Now by ID, we have our owner. I believe we're going to have our owner ID come in. So what I want to do is actually rename that from owner. Keep going to the wrong one. Come on, work with me, IntelliJ. There we go. Instead of owner, I want to hear it. I'm going to call it owner ID. So when it comes back to the form, that'll actually come back as something that I can use um, there. So let me go ahead and go into dog controller. Has to be the exact same name, owner ID. There we go. What it's going to do is find by ID, and it should be returning me an owner. Owner equals go for class. That's right. Oh, and I might be going way too fast. Oh, yeah, I'm going way too fast, but we'll go ahead and just do it anyway. It's already there. There we go. Alrighty. And empty. There we go. Turn dog slash creates. And if everything's okay, dog that dog that gets set owner to owner dot gets. Okay, yeah, that's right. Owner dot gets. Oh, I got to get dogs. That's absolutely right. Okay. Cool. We're going to go through this really quick because I don't want to get too far ahead because I believe some of this is going to be going over in next lecture. So good dogs. Perfect. All right. I apologize everyone for that small uh, Kyle babbling to himself uh, intermission there. So come on back. We're going to go ahead and talk through what exactly we were having there. So get dogs dot add. So what we're going to be doing here, is, okay, so is dog, perfect. Gonna save that, start that back up, and we're going to see if this is going to work. If you are worried about any of the things that you just saw, including this weird thing that we have never even talked about, this optional, or what we're doing here with this is empty or the gets. Don't worry about it too much. We'll be talking about that into the future. Um, we'll be covering it much more in depth in the next lecture. So don't worry too much about it. You're probably like, Kyle, I just saw you code for a bunch. I'm a little worried right now. What's going on? I'm like, it's all right. We'll talk about it. Don't you worry, dog slash create. Let's see if we can get this guy rolling. 
call it, let's call it Fido. Fido, see if this will work properly. Still fine, that's still fine there. Let's go ahead and see if this attached a little bit better. It did, all right. Thank you, finally, I was like, come on. All right, let's go ahead and talk about what just happened. So what we did was that we created a new owner object. We also created a controller for it. So as you saw there, we did slash owner and slash create. So here we were able to create an owner object. You've seen this previously, especially with ORM being introduced. When we created this owner object, we came over here and we were able to create one St. Louis and Kyle. When we saved it to our owner repository, it included in the database. So that's how Kyle was created. The next thing that we did was that we created a dog slash create. In here, we were able to put a dog name like we always have. We we'll call it Pebbles. Our dog age was just eight. And now we were able to actually pull in that information from the owner repository and populate it into this owner area here using that model.add attribute. So if we go over to our dog controller, <clears throat> we saw that all of our owners are populated through here because we called it owners and we called the owner repository and said find all. So that's how that information was populated here. So you've seen that too. When we get information back from the database, we do the dot find all. Then finally, this is what I really wanted to show to all of you, is that we have our dog name, our eight, and we're trying to associate it with Kyle. When we press create, what happens was, and don't worry about that warning that we get there, that's just the homepage not being able to render our new type of dog, dog object. What it does is that it goes in here and it says, okay, you want this dog to have this new owner ID. So what we did is that we got the owner by the owner ID from the repository. And then we associated the owner with the dog here, and we added our dog to our owner's list of dogs. And then after that, we saved it. So you've added things to a list before, and you've associated objects before. That's nothing new there. The new thing that I wanna introduce you all to is that in the dog, dog repository.save, what it did was it came over here and it saved our dog. So we'll query our dog here. And as we can see, we have Pebbles. Pebbles was the dog we just associated with the owner, Kyle. The ID was four for this dog. So what I wanna show you here is that under our owner, we have our owner of Kyle as ID of one. What this table actually does that we see this here is it associates an owner ID with a dog ID. We have our owner ID of, again, Kyle, which is one, with the dog's ID of number four. So this right here, I believe is Fido, and then this one is Pebbles. But what this table that, it, like when it was created and we did these relationships is basically an intermediary or, or just the middleman between associating the two tables. Again, I apologize for that long-winded answer for all of that coding there, but I did wanna really show you all this, that this is how that association actually happens with that one-to-many and many-to-one relationship. So um, I will be putting all this code too on GitHub too, if anybody's interested, um, but also happy to talk through any smaller portion. I know that was just a lot. I completely understand if someone out there, if you all are just like, that was a bit. But let me know if you have any specific questions about any of those portions that we want to see. Darren, I know you wanted to see something uh, possibly more specific, so please let me know before we move forward a little bit more. So how can you get your first dog on there? Because right now you only have three and four for the dog's ID. What about two? So with that case, we couldn't do it over a create, right? Because it would just create a new entry. So what we have to do is in, uh, introduce the concept of editing. So we'd want to edit our rows, which we haven't really talked about yet. And if I didn't just go through that entire long-winded coding there that way, I would also do the edit. But what you're looking for is an edit screen, which is also very possible. In that case, you'd want to update your entry. 
but we just don't have that in that application. Does that make sense, Uima? Yep, works for me. Fantastic. We will see an edit screen and that will be, edit screens will become more apparent too as we move forward with these applications and working with CRUD. Awesome, awesome. All right, so one more person typing, and then we're gonna move on a little bit. We only have a little bit more left. Darren, I'll go ahead and get that up uh, after class. I gotta help out uh, a studio group tonight, but I will get that up as soon as I possibly can, and I'll share it with all of you. Cool. All right. Now that I have royally angered everyone there, as my Monday headaches be continue, I'm gonna hopefully make it up to everyone by going over some doggone facts. Let's go ahead and bring it back to class, take a breath, and let's talk about some dog facts. Help me out here. It's often that <laughs> it's often thought that dogs are colorblind, but they can actually see in two different colors. Does anyone know those two colors that they can see? Blue and yellow, red and blue. Red it is blue. blue and yellow. Good for whoever that just like got it right on the first try. All right. I can never say this dog uh, type either, but this oh, and someone had it too in last class, and they could say it. But uh, the, is it Benzie? Howl. Yeah. Technically barkless, but instead they what? Not howl, but one more different thing. Taste great. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> they yodel. <laughs> they yodel. Jeez. <laughs> Y'all are wild. Oh my gosh. When dogs kick backwards after using the bathroom, it's not to cover it up, but to what? Mark their territory. Spread it around. It is, it is to mark their territory. They actually have scent glands in the back of their feet oh, that they use to actually mark their territory. There we go. All right, those are those facts. Hopefully I've made it a little bit back with you all. But just to anger you all again, let's go ahead and talk about one more relationship. Let's talk about one more, com not really complex, but one that maybe you have already seen because you've read the material or just coming up with it. We did a one-to-one, -one, a one-to-many, a many-to-one, and now we want to talk about what happens if we have all of our dogs here that have toys. Unlike bones, dogs typically will play with the same toys or have a lot of fun. So if you have a rope, one dog will play with it for a little bit and another dog will play with it for a little bit, but it's the same rope. So essentially this dog will be able to share this rope with another dog and be okay with it. In that case too, another dog can have multiple toys. So two dogs can share one toy and one dog can have multiple toys. So what this is, is that many dogs can have many toys. In this case, we have a many to many relationship here. This is how we can think of that, is that many dogs can have many toys. So if we wanted to associate something that's very general with another very general object, we'd use a many to many relationship. So in that case, I'm gonna leave you all with that last relationship because I'm sure everyone's head, just like mine, is a little bit hurt after all of that. So with that, we are all finished with this lecture. As we move forward, we're gonna see a little bit more about what I actually did in that code and we'll understand every single portion about it before next lecture and our lecture after that is completed. So this will not be too much of a mystery as we move forward, but I'm actually very glad that I got to show a little bit of that to you all before next week. So that is it for that. Any final questions that anyone has about any of the things that we saw today or any of those relationships? Anything at all? All right, everyone. In that case, thank you everyone very much for putting up with me. Have a fantastic week. Feel free to log off now to your smaller groups and I will see you all back here on Thursday. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Thanks, Kevin. Thank you.